for joining me today. Today, uh, I am going to do some meatloaf. Meatloaf with mother potatoes and sweet peas. And I just have the sweet peas that I just grabbed in the can out of the grocery store. So I'm doing these today. And uh, meatloaf with roasted, um, I'm sorry, meatloaf with some other potatoes today. Okay, the meatloaf, uh, now again, there's so many different ways you can do meatloaf. Some people do it with barbecue sauce, red gravy, or brown sauce, a roux. So I'm gonna do it with a roux today because that's like my favorite way to do my meatloaf. So in my meatloaf, I'm gonna use uh, the ground meat, three eggs, and this is uh, three pounds of ground meat right here. And I'm gonna use three, three eggs and breadcrumbs. You can use breadcrumbs, you can use panko if you want, or you can just wet three slices of bread and put it in there because we don't always have this kind of stuff to, you know, you don't wanna to have to run to the store and buy this, you know, if, if you don't have to. So if you have a loaf of bread at home, wet it and put it up, put it in there and mix it up because it's, it's pretty much gonna do the same thing and just add some Italian seasoning um, if you want, just add your other seasons in there. But uh, I have the plain uh, breadcrumbs today. They also have the Italian uh, breadcrumbs too, but I didn't get that today. So uh, the ground meat, I'm gonna put onion in there and probably put a little garlic with the breadcrumbs and the eggs. Now for my uh, smothered potatoes, I'm gonna cut up the bell pepper and an onion and probably put a little butter in there or some vegetable oil and just let it top it up, probably a little water at the bottom, top it up and let it do its thing because the water have a, the potatoes have a lot of water in it themselves so you don't have to add water uh, at the bottom of the pot when you're doing potatoes. It's real simple to do. It's, it's real simple. I, I used to do it for uh, a lot back when I was cooking um, for my family. But um, we can't really have potatoes here I love potatoes, but we can't, well, me and my mom and I can't really indulge in them like we want because all of the starch and everything in them, so I don't cook them as much. I used to. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make a roux today to go over my meatloaf and top it once I, uh, once I get it in the oven. Once I get it cut and everything, I will uh, top it with the roux that I'm going to make for it. Okay. I'm going to prep all of my ingredients that I need, cut my bell pepper, and I'm going to cut my preheating the oven. I have the oven on 350, so I'm preheating that for the meatloaf. What I'm going to do now is cut up my, my onion and bell pepper for my, uh, okay, I should have had all this ready, I'm sorry. Normally I'm better prepared, but it's just I've been ripping and running all day. important you guys you know when preparing food in a restaurant if you're working in a restaurant if you're at home preparing food for your family you want to be safe especially dealing with COVID now you want to make sure you're as clean as possible of course it's your kitchen your rules you do what you want but it's a new thing now named COVID and so we have to be especially careful when we're preparing food for our loved ones you guys so clean hands, clean hands, as often as possible, as often as you think about it, wash your hands. Okay, I'm going to go in and start cutting this. And this is actually, the bell pepper is going to be for my, uh, you know what, I'm going to need onions and everything for my, uh, for my gravy too. I'm really going to have to cook, cut up a, a few more seasons, so that's okay. But I'm cutting it now for my potatoes. 
this is not my favorite go-to knife. It's kind of heavy. I have another one that's sharper than this one. That uh, it's a little lighter. I'm kind of scared of this one because <laughs> it's it's kind of heavy duty, and I don't want to chop one of my dog on nails or playing with this thing. Gotta be more cautious with this one here. But like I said earlier, there's different ways to to cook a meatloaf. This is just my way that I that I normally do it. I don't cook it that often, but when I do, I do a roux because I'm a roux type of person. That's why I, cho I choose to do roux. But I've seen it other ways uh, prepared. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, everybody likes what they like, you know. And you don't necessarily have to do potatoes all the time because I was like, what can I do other than potatoes with my meatloaf. I'm so used to um, making potatoes with it. I was like, what else can I do? I didn't want to do two, you know, green vegetables with us. Like, well, okay, well, I'll just do some potatoes, but I won't eat. <laughs> I won't eat a lot of it. So all I'm doing now is cutting up my bell pepper and my onion for my going to be for my potatoes, you guys. I know I should be doing the meatloaf first, but, you know, I'm going to cut this up for my, my potatoes. And I still have to cut my potatoes. I still have to cut the skin off the potatoes and chop them up, so that's going to be another task. But I'm just cutting up the seasons right now. Because a friend of mine told me that I should. I should show myself actually cutting up the seasons. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. It's normally I cut have them already cut up and just come back with them already cut up. So I'm just actually cutting up on here. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this for my um, my smothered potatoes. And I'm going to um, use some, some garlic. I'm going to use some garlic and I'm going to put some parsley in there, which I love my parsley. So I'm going to put some parsley in there and I'm gonna put a little oil. I don't know if I'm gonna do oil, a little oil or margarine in the in the in the pot when I do my potatoes. I'm not sure. Yet. Probably be some vegetable oil though. So I'll be back you guys. Hey you guys I'm back and now I'm getting ready to cut my potatoes. Cut the skin, then look, I found my knife. This is my favorite knife. It's sharp and it's small. It's not really small, but it's short and lightweight. And I just, I work better with this knife here now. Some of you guys may choose to use a potato peeler. I just find that it takes too much time. And another way you can do it too, especially if you're doing mashed potatoes, you can boil the whole potato and just, just take the skin off once it gets soft. So there's different ways. To do it and then you can also leave the skin on too i mean that's not a bad idea i've done that before times i didn't feel like cutting a potato i would actually um just cut it without even taking the skin off and it's a lot of nutrients in there if you do it that way so that's what i'm doing now you guys i am cutting the skin off my potatoes so that i can Cut them up and just put them in. I'm just putting them in a pot. It's real simple. This is a real simple thing to do. And I kind of chose this because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, it's one of those kind of days where I want to take a bath and light a candle and get in the day to watch the movies. So, I'm going to be in and out of the I kind of feel guilty with putting pictures up and not actually going the extra mile to do a video for you, just in case if you want to know how to do it yourself. A lot of, a lot of these things that comes naturally to me, where it comes from me knowing over the years, but not everybody, you know, knows it, and they need step by step, step instructions. So 
That's why I try my best to explain what I can, you know. I was thinking about doing a sauce for Paul. My dad actually made it for me years ago. I was in the kitchen during Christmas dinner, and he came in, and he was like, why don't you make a sauce? So I was like, who look at his daddy. He's like, a sauce for Paul. I was like, you just get the ingredients, and... Tell me how to do it, and I'll show me how to do it, and I'll do it. So that's what he did. He went to the store. He got the ingredients and brought it back to the house, and he made it. I don't remember if he made it or uh, he helped me make it, make it, but after that time, I made it one more time. I was living in Lafayette. And, and I left it. I'm sorry. I was living in Lake Charles, and I made it one other time. I do want to make it again because it was really good. It's really good. So... Hopefully one day soon I'll get the things that I need to make it and I'll uh, show that to you guys and I also want to do a curry chicken. So I plan on doing that. I actually have some of the spices that I got from uh, Jamaica the last time I visited earlier in the mid part of last year. My trip there I brought back a few spices. I couldn't bring back a lot because they was tripping at the airport. <laughs> I was trying to take all the people stuff from down there because I love my season. I was trying to get it how I live, y'all. I was trying to get my seasoning. But unfortunately, they didn't, I could only get a certain size, uh, bring a certain size from over there. I couldn't get the big size seasonings from Jamaica when I went there. But they have some of the best seasons I have. I need some curry chicken, some curry seasoning, though. So that's what I'm going to use when I do the curry. And that's another dish that's not not really hard. I have a a friend that she showed me the first time that I went home and tried attempted to do it myself. She gave me a nice little recipe that I was able to uh, follow. And then you know again I might uh, call her and see if she can give me the recipe again because it's been a while since I made it. But I, I do remember that and it's a fairly uh, easy thing to do. So that's kind of that's what's coming up. Some, curry chicken and some sauce for crumb and you know whatever else and maybe like I said you guys have an idea of you know an opinion of what I can make I would love to do that for you because I need ideas on making things myself so okay what I'm doing now is just cutting the skin off of these potatoes and I'm gonna rinse them off cube them up Slicing them up and letting them do this do they thing. And really, this should have been the second thing for me to do. I should have had my meatloaf already in the oven at this point. So at home, normally on a regular day, <laughs> okay, I would have did. I would have mixed my season. I would have mixed my meatloaf up and had it in the oven, and then I would have came to do the potatoes, and then I would have had the soup peas in the pot. So by the time my meatloaf finished, I would have had my roommate to go over the meatloaf and then not be ready to eat. So, yeah, I always like to do my meat first because that's, uh, it takes longer for that to cook. Which with a meatloaf is not going to take long at all. So, okay, with that meatloaf, there's a couple, of, there's some other things you can do with that meatloaf. Now, some of you guys may not want to add the panko and the, the egg and all that. So really when you when you go without putting everything in, in your meatloaf like that, it's almost like it's a big hamburger. You know, and I don't think that's what you're trying to aim for. You know, so definitely put your ingredients in there to make it a loaf versus just a hamburger pack. Okay. And another thing too, I would definitely use this uh, meatloaf recipe to make Salisbury steaks. I would, or to make the little mini meatloafs. I would use the same, the very same recipe that I'm going to use today. Same concept. I mean, I'm sure there's other recipes online, but if I was to say, well, I'm having Salisbury steaks tonight, I would definitely use the same meatloaf recipe. Now, with the, the, the meatloaf that I'm doing, I'm going to put it on a pan. Okay, they have the meatloaf casserole pans that you can get in the store. You can just put it in there if you don't know how to mold a loaf. You can just put it in that pan, pack it down, and put it in another little grip. But the one that I have is small, so I don't want to use that. It's not going to be big enough, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to actually uh, just mold a loaf and just put it in. And it's going to hold together. Once it starts cooking, it's going to get firm. 
it's going to be pretty. And once I do, what I do once it starts to get firm and it's, it's thoroughly cooked pretty much, I would slice it. I would slice it, do my, I would slice it and then I would cover it. I would smother it with my gravy and then cover it up. And then once I cover it up with the gravy on it, I'll baste it a little bit with the gravy and then I'll cover it up and let it cook for another 10 minutes maybe. And then, you know, it should be good to go. Okay, so I am rinsing my potatoes now, you guys, so that I can go ahead and cut them. And this is all I'm doing. I'm just basically just cutting them right in the pot, you know. Like they say, kill two birds with one stone. That's basically what I'm doing. And you don't have to do it like this. It's just... It saves me time. And I have to be careful with this knife because it'll definitely, you know, be dangerous to my health, y'all. But I love a sharp, I would love a sharp knife. That's, I gotta have it that way. And I still have a little skin left on it. It's okay. It's okay. It is all good. But like I said, you don't have to do um, potatoes with your meatloaf. You can do some macaroni and cheese, some broccoli, broccoli rice. That's another thing I'm going to do for you guys. One of my favorites. Yeah, all them starch is something I'm not supposed to have, but my favorite things to eat. Did the doctor tell you <laughs> what not to have? Like, what can I have? You know? What can I have? You got to do what's right if you want to be around for a long time. You know, treat your body right, your body treats you right. So, that's the way that goes. So, as hard as it is, I do what I can when I can, you know. So, you guys, I'm cutting the potatoes here. I'm just cutting them up. In the bottom of the pot, I put a little, I think I put a little oil in there already. Not a lot. And I did that so that um, it won't stick to the bottom of the pot. That's why I did that. Because it's gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get some water from these potatoes. It's gonna come out of these potatoes. It's amazing how much water is in these potatoes. You don't have to cut them that small, but they really don't take that long to soften up once you put a lid on it and everything, so So now I have my potatoes cut in the pot. I have my onion, and I could you can you can put celery in here too. I love my, my the mixture that they call it the Holy Trinity. I know some other stuff probably go in there too, but my onions and my bell pepper, and my celery, I love it to season my food with. Okay, so I'm just putting that on the top right there, you guys, with, and then I'm gonna use just where I, I say I'm just gonna use this one today. I'm just going to use this. Make it simple. Do the right thing. I'm just going to use this today, you guys. Okay. Dash some of that on top. Or you can just use some salt and pepper. Or you can just let the, vet, the onions and bell peppers be all you need because the potato have like a little sweetness still a natural goodness to it by itself where you don't really have to add anything. Now, if you're one of those type of people that just love to really just taste your food, like me, definitely add you some of the stuff up in there so you'll be happy, you know. But, you know, I, I do add things in it, but I go light. I go light. You know, I do want to live happy. You know, you know I, I want to live. Okay, so I did that. I'm going to turn my owl on i'm gonna do it on a medium heat you guys because i don't want it to cook too fast i want it to like smother in that pot and once it starts smothering down getting soft my potatoes start getting soft and i'm gonna toss it up and you're gonna i mean once when you do that you see like the brown crispiness on your potatoes at that point and you know 
it don't take long for that to happen and I gotta put my garlic in there. I completely forgot about this. Put my garlic in there. So what I'm gonna do next is do my mixture for my uh, my medium. And I'm gonna actually put that, go ahead and put that in a bowl and then come back and let you see um, the results of that. So I'll be right back. I wanted to, to get the, the holes and everything out of it, just pack it together. So once I do that and get it up and ready, I'll be back. Hey you guys, I'm back and this is uh this is the the meatloaf that I that I have. I molded it and everything and um I actually got this little roasting pan and it have a lid to it. So that's going to help me when I put the the gravy on top of it, you guys, and then I can cover it back up. So that's going to work out for me. You can use a pan if you want. You can use one of those casserole dishes like a loaf dish if you want to accomplish what you want your meatloaf to be like. But I did mine a little big because uh, I'm gonna cut slices in it and, and cover it with gravy. So that's why I shaped mine the way I did. So it's really up to you how you wanna shape your meatloaf uh, before you cook it. So this is what I did. I also added some of this on top of it, okay? And I also put some more Worcestershire sauce on top of it too because I wanted to make sure it had some flavor on there, you guys. But again, you can season yours to your liking, however you want. Okay, so this is getting ready to go in the oven. I'm going to say 25 minutes, but I'm going to keep checking on it. So by the time this comes out the oven, I'll be ready to put the gravy on top and we'll be on the road. Be back in a few, you guys. And you guys, we're going to take a sneak peek at these potatoes, you guys. Yes, 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 yes. Let me get a spoon. Let's see what's going on in this pot. Now, I do need to make a roux, but I'm not going to do that uh, on camera because I think I did it on another one of my videos with the succotash. And if you want to know how to do the roux, you can definitely go and find it on YouTube on how to do a roux from scratch because I don't have the measure. The measurements uh, for the room. Or like I said in the last video that I did, you can get the can gravy. If you want a brown gravy over your meatloaf, you can get the can, you can get the jar, you can get the powder one that I showed you guys in another video. I did. And I'll show you again. This is what I was talking about. You can use that. That's if you want the brown gravy on there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is cook down for a little bit, a little minute. So I'm going to go in now and give it a nice little stir. And it's sticking. And I hate when that happens. It's sticking a little bit at the bottom. So I'm going to turn it down. Because the potatoes are cooking pretty good. So I'm going to turn it down on a low. I'm going to turn it down a low and then I'm going to add a little water at the bottom. You got to kind of keep an eye on it. Put a little water down there. Okay, the potatoes are getting soft. They're not as soft as they need to be, but they are getting there. Okay, so I'm going to let this cook down some more. I have it on low now. I have it on low. I'm going to leave it on low too. Because most of the potatoes are soft. And it's been cooking for like 15 minutes. 15, maybe 20. I wasn't uh, I don't know. I, I like cooking, but like 15 minutes, I guess. And I should have came back to it and stirred it. So you kind of like keep an eye on your potatoes, you guys, when you're doing it like this. But they definitely will do their own thing. You just have to make sure you have some oil at the bottom of the pan, a little water to make sure it don't stick. But it's definitely doing its thing. So what I'm getting ready to do now is go and do my roux. I'm going to take these sweet peas. 
put a little, maybe put a little salt and pepper, maybe some sugar, a little tab of sugar and some, I might put onions. That's just an idea of, you know, if you want to go that route with your sweet peas, but you don't have to. You can just, you know, put it in, in a little pan, a little pot with uh, some salt and pepper and butter if you want. You know, however you want to prepare your peas, or you may not want peas at all. I'm just having peas today. Well, we're having peas with our meatloaf today. So I'm going to do my little room. So I'll have it to go over my meatloaf once it start to finish. And my peas, I'm going to warm them up and then I'll be done and out of the kitchen. So uh, that's it, you guys. I mean, it's, it's fairly easy. I'm just saying it's fairly, it's fairly easy. I think it's a fairly easy meal. You got your meatloaf and your potatoes. And you know, if you don't want to go through the process of cutting potatoes, you can always get a bag of vegetables or you can get some potatoes in a can. Matter of fact, my mom bought some, but I don't know where they are. You can get the potatoes in a can. You can get the mashed potatoes in a pack. You can get the instant mashed potatoes if you want and just do that and get, you can get the instant pack of mashed potatoes. You can get the brown, the brown gravy for your gravy. You know, you can take that loaf, mix it together, do your thing, let it cook on its own in the oven. Several ways to make it simple in the kitchen if you're a busy person and you don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen because a lot of us don't, you know. So if you are a busy person, that's definitely an easy meal to make. Uh, you can prep some little bitty mini loaves the night before or, you know, the day of to just make it a little bit more simpler when you get ready to prepare. I mean, to, to fix food for your family. I mean, it's a different way. It's, it's a lot of different ways that you can do this. But like I said, again, I'm going to come back, you guys, the next time and probably do a chicken curry. I'll probably do that, and then I want to try the sauce pecan again because it's been years since I made that. And I love it. I love it. I think it's a wonderful dish. I think it may have possibly, don't get me, don't quote me on this, but I think it may have been originated like maybe Lafayette, Bill Flat, or somewhere like that. I'm not sure. I'll be back, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys, I'm back. And this is the finishing, this is the finished results of my meatloaf. It's not quite done. It can cook probably about another 10 minutes, but I'm doing my roux over here. So this is before I cut it and before I put the roux over the top. So I'll be back once I get it cut up and get my roux on top. See you later. Okay, you guys, I cut it up already. And as you can see, the meatloaf is breaking up a little bit. And that's kind of like what I said earlier about the meatloaf. This is three pounds of ground meat, and I put three eggs in there, but you want to do more than that. You want to do probably like five or six eggs, just so it'll hold together better. I think I did enough breadcrumbs, but I didn't do enough eggs. So, that's trial and error. So, this is the roux that I made with the onions. And I'm just going to just gonna pour it on top. And before, you did, before I um, turn the camera on, uh, I pulled some of the oil off of it before I pour the gravy on top. Okay. So now that the gravy, I cut it and I put the gravy on top, I'm going to lid it up and let it cook for another five minutes in the oven and then it'll be done. Be right back. Hey, you guys. I am back with the finished product. I have my meatloaf here with my sweet peas and my smothered potatoes. Okay, so what happened here was I didn't put enough egg in that ground meat and it started to break up when I pulled it out. Started pulling it out of pan. So, um, I had three pounds of ground meat and I just had three eggs. I think you should add like six or seven eggs in there if you have that much ground meat to make sure that it hold together firmly as it cooks so it'll, it'll cook out you know it'll, it'll be able to pick out of the pan fairly uh, easy and it won't break apart but this is the finished product you guys thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you the next time Soodles.